Well, welcome back to the log cabin. Did you guys catch that video that Doug did yesterday with Dr. Leo? I love it when he comes because he is so interesting. Every time he comes, I get a million nuggets and I could just listen to him forever. I know the video he did with him was um, a little long, but we got so many comments, people saying that I don't even raise bees, but it was the most interesting thing that they saw. So if you guys have not seen that video, definitely watch it because it is a must see. But we've been dodging a lot of rain here. We've had rain, storms, lightning. We had lightning hit right behind the house and it was crazy. Even little Elsa, our lamb, can you hear her yelling in the background? It's almost time for her to eat, I think. She ran right back to her house. It was so scary for her. But we've had crazy, crazy, crazy weather. But right now, Doug is working on and we're finishing up on our powerhouse next door using all that lumber that we milled just out of two logs. And I still can't believe it. It's so cool to know that we have the actual tree. We had the tree and then we cut it up and we made our own lumber that we went and put on the outside of the powerhouse and it is looking amazing. So you guys stay tuned for that. That video is coming up, I think, tomorrow or the next day. So you can look forward to that. But I thought I would go into the garden right now and get a bunch of greens and I want to give you a garden tour because you haven't seen it in a few weeks and with all this rain and sunshine we've had, it's really popped. Come on along. Well, welcome to my garden on the edge of the forest. On the way in, did you guys see that totally awesome rainbow? It was so cool, wasn't it? I just love them. It's really cool since we've lived out here. It's really neat. We can look out and the rainbows go all the way across, but I haven't found that pot of gold yet. <laughs> Maybe one of these days I will. But I wanted to do, I thought since we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and start here at my little pepper palace and kind of talk to you about how I, I arranged it. So. Peppers are one of my favorites. They're loaded in vitamin C and they're just amazing and they're a great way, you know, you can get your spicy ones, you can get your sweet ones, the regular green bell peppers, and they go good with different foods that you're eating. So I like to add a variety of the peppers. And what I did is I always put my onions around, but this year I went ahead and I dispersed, interspersed beets because beets are probably one of my favorite, favorite vegetables that you can eat because how nutritious the leaves are, and also the root itself. And beets are amazing because they increase your blood flow. And when you have increased blood flow, that's gonna help with oxygen getting through your body. So all the stuff that we're doing around here, or maybe with you guys at your home and your homesteads, who could use a little extra energy, right? So I love beets, I use them all the time, and they're amazing in ferments and in salads, and you can pickle them, they're just great. So what I did was, in between my peppers, I put beets. They haven't come up quite yet and I like that because what's going to happen is as they get bigger they're going to help with the weed control for the peppers and they're going to help retain moisture in the, the earth. So that way they're all helping one another. And then I have the onions to help with pests and then over here at the end just right when I come in I have some zinnias so it'll look really pretty when I come in. And you can also eat those zinnias too. Over here I just have one of the littler beds and I like these. These are good that you can go ahead and put in a lot of greens. So I do so many greens here. I like to have like extra beds to have greens. So here I have a lot of my varieties of salad greens in here because I use this and nibble on this all summer long. So next in this bed, I have, here's some oregano. This is a perennial, it comes back. It came back from last year. And oregano is a great thing to add to your garden because it's very hardy, it tolerates the heat, it's just wonderful. It smells wonderful, it, it tastes great. You could dry it out, it's good in a lot of your dishes that you're doing. And it's great, if you guys have chickens, it's great to dry it out and add it to the chicken feed because it's a great immune boosting herb. So I like to use this for a lot of different things. And then another thing that I have here is dill. So I put a whole row of dill here and I like to grow the dill throughout the whole season. So I'll keep the dried seeds and then once this kind of gets big, I'll just keep trying to plant it throughout the summer and then that way I have fresh dill all throughout the summer because nothing tastes better than fresh dill. How many of you guys eat it when it's dry? It doesn't have the same flavor at all. So I use it in a lot of ferments and I like to put it on sandwiches because it really adds such a wonderful flavor to it. So since beets are one of my favorite, I do have quite a few of them. So I have some bull's blood beets and some golden beets here too, as well as 
some kale. So I have the red Russian kale because I go through a lot of kale here and also the dinosaur kale. Now kale is a cruciferous vegetable. They're great for detoxification and kale is good and especially when it's young and it's tender. So I like to grow it. Some of these are pretty close together that I'll go ahead and use and then I'll fill, fill them out and let some of them grow a little bit bigger. As well as I have the onions around here and then here, this is a volunteer chamomile and I love chamomile so I kind of grow it throughout because I like to have it in my tea to relax us at night, Doug, and I do drink it almost every night. Now this is the bed that I'm getting the most food from right now that I'm using the most because a lot of these greens here I've had all winter. The parsley and the kale. So I've been eating off of this for a long time. So what I'll do is once it's been through its life cycle, I guess, and I've used it all up, then I'll go ahead and plant something else here. Now I have quite a few herbs that I have in the garden, especially my basil because we've had some cooler nights and basil doesn't do very well when it's cool. So I'll be putting them out probably in the next week or so. But here, I like to put lots of herbs when I'm cooking and in my salads because herbs are so nutritionally dense and they're loaded with wonderful vitamins, minerals that are great for your immune system and are great because you don't need to eat a lot. You know, just a little bit, a little dab will do ya. <laughs> if you're, when you're putting them in your sandwiches. So when you're cooking or when you're making your meals, I always try to add some fresh herbs. If you're having eggs, you could put some parsley on them or a sandwich. So it's just a great way to add flavor to your things that you're eating. And especially like here is dill. I always want to put a little bit of that into my salad also. And then here is my slow bolt cilantro. Cilantro is one of my favorites. It is great. It's a, one of the best heavy metal detoxifiers that you can add to your diet. So if you are one of those people who love cilantro, definitely add it because we all need that detoxification. Now guys, we are still in the same bed. Right here, I have a whole big patch of rainbow Swiss chard. So that's another one that's great. I love to use the greens. We put them in our smoothies. I like to go ahead and saute them. So Swiss chard is great because it will last the whole season. It just gets bigger. I just keep eating the outside leaves and it will last the whole entire season. Right over here in the same bed is my little arugula bed. And I always say arugula, it's what's for dinner. And arugula is, is awesome. This bed we have been harvesting from since probably the very beginning of April. Because arugula, when you plant the seed, it grows almost like as quick as you snap your fingers. And I want to show you something right here because I pulled some of the plants out that we have harvested on. And in one day we had a storm and the sunshine and it grew. So come on over and look at this. So look at this. These little arugula guys have popped up just a matter of a day. I planted the seeds. We had the rain and the next day I came out later in the day and look what happened. So if you guys say, I don't have a green thumb, try arugula because they're really easy. Radishes and arugula are really easy to grow. So let's go over here and look at my cucumber tower. So this year I decided to put a little tower here and put some cucumbers. And I like the Armenian cucumbers and actually the Armenian cucumbers is actually a melon. And I really like the Armenian cucumber because it has a very mild flavor and it makes very good um, pickles and ferments and it looks beautiful like a little bitty uh, star. And the cool thing about the Armenian cucumbers is some people can't tolerate maybe the taste of a cucumber. It just tastes like a milder cucumber. As well in here, I have some voluntary from the seeds left over from last year. I have a bunch of cilantro coming up, volunteer, as well as some chives. Let's go on over here now. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button so you can see what those Armenian cucumbers look like for later. Now over here, I planted some turnips. Now I use my greens for everything. So I know a lot of people, you use the actual root, but I'm gonna use the greens. So I love to use these greens because they're so loaded in potassium, magnesium. And so I always try to add a lot of greens into our diet every day, as well as, here's my chives. They're flowering. I'm gonna add them into my salad and it looks really pretty. And they taste good too.
Over here is my broccoli and my cauliflower. Look at these leaves. They look like elephant ears, don't they? But they're beautiful. We've had nice cool weather, so it's definitely thriving here. I have both uh, cauliflower and broccoli in here. So it's one of my favorites. I use it for a lot. We'll go ahead and um, be eating it very soon, I hope. Now there's not a lot too much going on here, but I have some sage left over from last year. It's in a perennial, of course, and then some more oregano, and I have some broccoli, and then I planted a tomato plant, and I have, um, I think that might be a Cherokee purple tomato plant, and then I have some Genovese basil, and I did my mammoth sunflowers. I like to stick the little sunflower seeds in the corner of a lot of my beds all over, and then it'll come up, and then I have some, um, also marigolds. Marigolds are great companion planting. So what I do is I grow some in the greenhouse and then I just pull them out and I stick them throughout the garden in different parts. And it kind of helps. It's a good companion plant to help deter pests. So I hope you guys are getting the consensus that you can grow a lot of food in a small area. But right here I wanted to show you this. I had never done this before. I have a variety of garlic. Over here I have my elephant garlic. I can look at this, it's getting scapes. And I was excited to grow the hard neck variety to get the scapes this year because last year and the year before I had done the soft neck variety and I had never gotten the scapes. So this year I will have some scapes to use later and look forward to a recipe with them. But what I did this year to kind of protect them from those cabbage worms and the moss, I embedded my cabbage in between my garlic and so I'm going to see if that works and kind of helps with that because we have a lot of those little white moss and those cabbage worms around here so I hopefully this will work. Now I'm going to show you something else. Now over here I'm very happy with how this is turning out. I have made a, ca a cage for my tomatoes. Really, Doug made the cage for the tomatoes, but we got a cattle panel and we just arched it over and then I put the tomatoes inside of there. From there, I got burlap string and then I just hang, would hang it down and then just kind of gently wrap it around the base of the tomato and then it kind of will just grab onto it. So when it gets windy, it just kind of flows with it and then they don't break or snap. So we get a lot of wind here, so this has been very successful. I did it last year and I was very happy with it. So this is working good and I'm gonna stick with it. And then the one thing that I did this year that I'm very excited about is I put the sugar snap peas going up the side of my tomato cage and I did it on both sides and look how beautiful it's working out. So I'm really happy with this too. This is probably one of my little favorite things that I've done so far this summer. Now the sun's going down and I wanted to show you, here is my little zucchini patch. I have two kinds. I have a white variety of zucchini and a golden zucchini. And I want to show you, I already have all these cute little zucchinis growing. Here's the gold zucchini. And there are some white ones over here. And the funny thing is, I think it's kind of neat. Look at the leaves. The golden ones have the yellow in the leaves and the whiter zucchini has the white in the leaves. <laughs> See, look at it. All right, sun's going down. A few more beds to go, let's go. Over here we have our sweet potato bed. And this is the Beauregard sweet potatoes. And what I did is I thought I would try something a little different because you know when you plant sweet potatoes, they go crazy everywhere. It's like Rapunzel's hair, they go all over the place. So I just had, you know, some of these little cattle panels and I thought then we can kind of let it go up and over so that they won't go so crazy and you'll trip over them when you're walking through the garden. So I did this, we have two sweet potato beds. I have another one over here. And this one, I'm gonna put our purple sweet potatoes. Right now, there's some little weeds coming into it, but I'm gonna be planting them tomorrow or the next day so that we'll have two different varieties. One will be purple and one will be orange. As you can see, we're still doing a little more work. We have a few more rocks to throw down and kind of put some tarp down, but we're getting close, we're almost done. But this was the bed that I wanted to have a fennel of a bed. And it, I don't know if it's doing anything. I can see 
here look this looks like one they look like there's a few in here so when it gets a little warmer we'll see what happens but I have to keep you updated on it because this is what I wanted to really grow so I'd have one every year so we'll keep you updated on that one all right let's come over here now these are the beds that we just added this year. They were lower. I'm gonna go ahead and put some medicinal type herbs. I have stinging nettle in here. I threw some zinnia seeds in here along with my comfrey and I have some peppers in here also. As well as we kind of made an L-shaped one. I have some marshmallow growing in here. I threw some mullein seeds in here. I think I have some echinacea. So as it starts to grow, I put some nasturtium. So as it starts to grow, I'll see, and then I'll probably add more to it. That's the cool thing with these beds. Once it starts to grow and you can see and you have extra room, you can add to it as the season goes on. And then over here in this bed, I put some onions around here. There's some self heal growing and some cardinal lobelia as well as some scarlet bee balm. So I'm interested to see how this takes and gets going. The self heals going very well, but it'll be a little bit more low growing, so I could probably plant some other things around that. Now over here I have some Shasta daisies, and these are all edible, and then the variegated coxcomb. I was very excited. I saw that at Baker Creek last year, and I ordered some, and it is beautiful. So it's starting to grow. I'm getting some little bitty like buds coming up out of that one. And then finally I put some zinnias in here. Zinnias are easy growing, easy keepers. They add a lot of color and beauty and they're great for the pollinators. So I like to add um, zinnias to the garden. And you can also eat the zinnias too. If you put some in your salad, you can eat them also. We have been battling with a lot of cooler temperatures. So generally at this time of year, we would have a lot more things growing. But what I did is, when Doug and I first moved here, we started with 250 strawberry plants. And it was a lot of work. <laughs> and so uh, we stopped with strawberries and we went ahead and we went to blackberries that would be a little bit you know, easier to work with. So this year I decided we made a little bed and I did about a dozen ever-bearing plants and we put them in um, not just a couple weeks ago and they're doing pretty good. So I'm excited we're going to add strawberries to our repertoire of gardening fun. So I have strawberries now as well as I have some musk melons. So there's little five little plants here and we had an old um, fence that Doug had taken apart. We'd taken it from up front and I thought I'll just put it up there and maybe kind of put the vines over that. So if it gets warm, they look kind of icky right now, they'll start to grow and we'll have some muskmelon too. Come on over here now. And over here is a potato patch. I have two varieties of potatoes. I have the red Pontiac potatoes and I have the Kennebec. So one's a red one and one is a white potato. And they're starting to pop up now. It looks like the white ones, the Kennebecs are a little slower popping up. And the red ones came up a lot quicker, but they're doing very well. And in my bed, I put some sunflowers, the mammoth sunflowers. And if you guys wanna know something about me, my favorite flower is the sunflower. I love them. I like to plant them all over the place as well as I have some sage in here. Sage is good to help deter some of the um, potato beetles too, so I have uh, some sage in there. But the potatoes look like they're rocking, as well as I want to show you something else over here. Now before I show you the bed right here, and if you're new around here, my husband and I used to do back to Eden gardening on this other side of the garden here. And it was so labor intensive, it wasn't working. For three years I couldn't grow anything, things, it just, was not good. So we abandoned that and we decided to keep adding more of the raised beds. Well, there's a little patch back here and Doug leveled it out because we don't have a raised bed on that and I thought, perfect, I'm gonna plant some strawberry popcorn. So I planted a bunch of strawberry popcorn and then I had a little mound of dirt there and I put some watermelons there and as well as a big sunflower patch. So you guys stay tuned to see that one. Now, let's talk about my flying pigs. <laughs> Who doesn't like a flying pig? I love them, they add so much joy to my garden. I love coming in all the time. And the grandkids love to play with them when they come over, so they're just so much fun. But this is my peppermint patch. I use peppermint for so much, it's just amazing because I use it for lots of teas. I add them in making mint extract.
there was a cat in there and it couldn't do anything because of my netting. Awesome. If you guys didn't see that video, I can't tell you. Today I was telling Doug about my netting, that black mesh netting. Do I have it around here right now? Well, the black mesh netting that we were using worked out so well. And then you can't see it. You can roll it up too. It's not an eyesore. And I have been getting the best job with it. I love it. So if you guys haven't seen that video, go check that out. But this is my peppermint. It is. It smells good. Mint extract. Use it for teas. So I love the mint and it smells amazing. And it's a gift that you can give lots of people. I just gave my neighbor a bunch of it so she could add it to her property. And it's something, it's a good gift to give somebody. Now I have to tell you something that happened. I left the gate open to my garden for just a brief moment to run inside and come back out. And guess who was in my garden? The chickens. So they wreaked a little havoc. I had all my Chinese red noodle beans perfectly spaced out here. A lot of them were growing already. They came and scratched everything up. So these all got dug out. Some of these decided to come up over here. So I stuck these the little boards here so that maybe they can attach and go up. These red noodle beans are so beautiful. They come out of the flower with two long stems of the beans. They're beautiful. They're great in stir fries. How many of you guys have ever grown those before? Or maybe you should try sometime. Maybe next year you can try them because they are amazing. But in the meantime, I think Elsa, my little lamb, is, is screaming because she wants to eat and Doug's hungry and I'm hungry. And I just wanted to give you a quick tour. I want you to stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't so that you can see how my garden progresses because it'll look so much better in a few more weeks because I'm looking forward to seeing it too. And we're working hard on the powerhouse next door. We're going to be having a video coming up on the progress because it looks amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed it, the tour today, and I will look forward to seeing you guys next time. See you and have fun gardening and grow some sunflowers. I'll see you soon. Elsa. I'm sorry, Elsa, I had to give everybody the garden tour. I know you're hungry. She's strong, man. I have to really brace myself now, the bigger she's getting. This is a great thing to do at the end of the day. It brings me so much joy. Hope you enjoy the garden tour. See you later.